Right now, Chicago is honoring a fallen firefighter. A live look inside 4th Presbyterian Church on Michigan Avenue. Family, friends, and colleagues will say goodbye to Lieutenant Ward. Kevin Ward, who died Son, weeks after Paul being injured. Let's take a listen in. Death is always a mystery, more so when it comes unexpectedly and suddenly. But whenever it comes, death is never the end, but is always a beginning. Gathering here today, we cling to a power greater than death, the power of resurrection, the power of a love that will not abandon us to despair, but abides with us and remains with us even unto death, a power that not even death can conquer. We hold to the promises of the scriptures today that though tears may linger at nightfall, joy comes in the morning. And in the words of Jesus, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And so let us pray. O God who gave us birth, you are ever more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask, for you know us better than we know ourselves. Show us now your grace that as we look through the fog of our mortality, we may see through to the horizon of eternity with you. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to live as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are ended, enable us to die as those who go forth to live so that living or dying, our life may be in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. I would invite you to stand now as you're able and sing our opening hymn. The hymn books are the purple books in the backs of the pews, and we will sing hymn number 326, For All the Saints.
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Amen. Another reading from the scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And these words from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. On behalf of the Congregation of Fourth Presbyterian Church, as one of its pastors, I extend a warm welcome to all of you here today, though I know that none of us would choose this as the occasion for our meeting. Still, it is good, I believe, to come together at a time like this, to sit shoulder to shoulder with family and friends, people who worked with Kevin or played with Kevin, people who maybe even never met Kevin but shared a connection with him and have been impacted by his life all the same. Chicagoans, people from lots of other places, people of different faiths, people of no particular faith. It is good in this hour for us to be together, if only to be reminded that we are not alone. We are not alone in grief. We are not alone in loss or in shock or bewilderment. We are united here in this hour, and I trust beyond this hour by the spirit that beckons us out of isolation and into community. I might suggest that we are also united in this time with all of those who have walked this road ahead of us, four fathers and four mothers who have mourned sons and daughters, compatriots, companions, sisters and brothers in some such way. That includes, I believe, the people addressed by these words of Jesus that we just heard from John's Gospel, for they too were together to face a moment of unexpected loss, because the life that they had been imagining for themselves and their friends and their families, a life with Jesus, was vanishing right before them, as their beloved friend, their respected teacher, suddenly appears to be disappearing, going away, without hardly any warning or explanation, only saying that he is going away and that where he's going, they can't come with him. They're losing him. We lose people just like that. We lose people. It's one of the defining features of being people, that we lose people. We lose one another. It's what makes love such a risk. I suspect that the one who spoke these words, where I am, you will be also, is very well aware of the risks 
that his friends have taken in loving, the risks they have taken in loving him and in loving one another. It is the greatest thing, after all, that he has asked of them to love one another, to love their neighbor as themselves, as themselves. The teacher knows the risks they're asking their disciples to take. And the disciples know those risks. When we love, we know the risks. And in this moment of recognizing and reckoning with that risk, the word we hear is believe. Do not let your hearts be troubled, but believe. Jesus says that like it's a choice between two opposites, belief or a troubled heart, belief or distress, belief or fear. That sounds kind of counterintuitive to me because it seems to me that some of the greatest things that humans can accomplish, we accomplish when belief and fear collide inside of us, when we're forced to confront danger or discomfort, pushed by belief. We may never fully know the ways in which the unspoken belief of people we won't ever meet enrich our lives, and it happens every day. Listening to people talk about Kevin, reading the things that people have said about Kevin these past several days, it's clear to me at least that distress and conviction coexisted in his life and in the things that he chose to spend his life on. From adventurous hobbies like rock climbing and underwater hockey and skiing and surfing and scuba diving, activities that employ, in one person's phrase, elements of risk mitigated by thoughtful attention to technique, fear, and belief. His intellectual curiosity in which the mind is pushed outside its comfort zone to encounters and ideas that feel threatening and destabilizing, fear and conviction. His artistry, because every new creation risks falling short of the artist's vision, fear and belief. His service to the community, because there is no guarantee that your efforts to make the world a better place will be rewarded. Change is hard. In many days, it feels like evil is winning, fear and belief. And of course, the firefighting work that he chose as a career and performed faith faithfully for 27 years, fear and conviction. You don't do that kind of work, I don't think, for that long without becoming very well acquainted with the critical interaction between conviction and fear. Is not that the definition of courage that we often hear? Not the absence of fear, but action in the face of fear. Because fear may never be banished altogether, but as it was time and time again in Kevin's life, it can be overcome. It must be overcome in the end if we are to live a life of meaning and purpose and significance, fear has to be overcome. It's one of the most frequent admonitions in the Jewish and the Christian scriptures. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. Overcome fear with faith. Moses pressed between an advancing army and the Reed Sea to his people. Do not be afraid. Do not fear the word of the Lord to the prophet tasked with speaking out against systems of exploitation and oppression. Do not fear those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. The wisdom of the rabbi to his followers who are pushed around by the powers of the empire. The psalmist that Father McFarland read for us just now, comparing himself to a sheep under the protection of a good shepherd, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This is the knowledge that overcomes fear. The knowledge of the heart that God is present no matter what the circumstance. You are with me, says the psalmist to God. 
Friends, this is the faith that we cling to today and in the days ahead, that God is with us in the darkest of valleys, yea, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In the words of the hymn that we will sing in a moment, I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. This is the comfort and the hope that holds out its hand to us when we have lost, when we count ourselves even among the lost, when comfort can't be found and sense can't be made of things, that we are not lost to God, God who created us, God who loves us. We are not lost to God, not now, not ever. No one is lost to God. God is with us in our fear and in our belief. God is with us in death as in life. God is present to Kevin in death, just as God was present to Kevin in life. We are together with one another and with Kevin in the presence of God today and always. Amen. I invite you to stand once again as we sing our hymn, Be Thou My Vision. have three tributes offered in Kevin's honor this morning, and the first of those will be offered by the mayor of the city of Chicago, Mr. Brandon Johnson. Thank you, 
Today, we come together to celebrate the life and legacy of Lieutenant EMT Kevin Ward. A son, a brother, a friend, an uncle, a hero who put his service above himself. Lieutenant Ward made the ultimate sacrifice for his city, and there's nothing that we can do or say to repay that enormous debt. But we can lift up our prayers and offer our comfort and support for his loved ones and the entire Chicago Fire Department. I do want to offer my condolences to John, to Beth, to Karen, Keegan, Piper, and Kareen. You know, I had a chance to meet the family this morning, and I am truly sorry for your loss. But know that the city of Chicago is standing with you. You know, in meeting this family and reading about Lieutenant Ward, I'm impressed, fascinated, and somewhat disturbed by my own life and my inability to take more risks. Born in Oxford, raised in Ann Harbor, Michigan, and decided to call Chicago his home. And so before becoming a firefighter, this is the fascinating part about Lieutenant Ward. He tried his hands in everything. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange, ski resort employee, a hotel chef, commercial fishing. I don't even know what this is. Deckhand on a boat out of Alaska. <laughs> and it wasn't enough for him to conquer the world on land. I had to Google what underwater hockey is. <laughs> To have those type of hobbies, including welding and engineering, design, glass blowing, he certainly fulfilled his life. And with all of those interests and talents, today we would refer to him as a Renaissance man. You raised a fine gentleman. You loved a fine gentleman. You've cared for a fine gentleman. And a fine gentleman will always be remembered. As he explored all of his passions, what I am most profoundly appreciative of is that he lived a life of service. And though driven by his adventurous spirit and his desire to serve community, becoming a Chicago firefighter, where he had the chance to use his intelligence, his talents, and his skills for the greater good. He was selfless, courageous, and deeply dedicated to the greatest city in the world, the city of Chicago. As we struggle to deal with the loss of Kevin, I'm comforted by the words in my own faith. It's to be absent from the body is to be forever present with our God. So his legacy of service it certainly will inspire Chicago firefighters and those to come because he will always be remembered as our hero. You know, Kevin lived a life devoted to others. He walked uprightly. And so we know he will find and he has found profound peace because the scriptures also tell us that those who walk uprightly will enter into peace and they will find rest even in death. Again, to his family, know that I am just a phone call away and know that the city of Chicago is here for you. So let's pray for the wards. Let's pray for our fire department as we mourn this loss. But let's also make sure that we continue out the legacy of service and let's find comfort in his memory. In this time of grief, let us find strength in one another by supporting each other, by building a city that is worthy of Lieutenant Ward's legacy in his life. Thank you. Thank you for the gift of Lieutenant Ward. May God bless his family.
the Chicago Police, De the Chicago Fire Department, Chicago Police Department too, and the entire city of Chicago. Thank you. The Commissioner of the Chicago Fire Department, Commissioner Annette Nance Holt, will now offer a tribute to Kevin as well. Good morning. Let me first start by saying thank you to we have elected officials here, we have the Gold Badge Society here, we have the 100 Club here. Uh, we have suburban fire department chiefs here and support suburban fire department members. We have local too. We have affiliated firefighters, members of the International Association of Firefighters. Uh, we have um, other international delegates who are here with us as well. We have departments from out of state here. I think I saw New York and Cal Fire. Let me say thank you from the bottom of my heart as fire commissioner. We really, really appreciate you. In addition to our partners, the Chicago Police Department and OEMC who work with us every day, thank you for your support and just everybody here. I wanted to get that first out the way before I forget. but. Uh, as we gather in profound sorrow to pay our respects and say our heartfelt goodbyes to a remarkable individual, Lieutenant EMT Kevin Ward of Truck 9 was a man who cherished adventure and discovered his true calling when he became part of the Chicago Fire Department back in 1996. On that fateful August day, Kevin made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty, battling a fire to protect the lives and property of our fellow citizens. Today. We unite not only to mourn his untimely passing, but to honor the life and legacy of a devoted firefighter, a loving son, brother, uncle, and a friend. Lieutenant Kevin Ward embodied the very essence of firefighting and the Chicago Fire Department. His dedication to serving and safeguarding others was unwavering. Kevin was known for his passion of underwater hockey, as, as you've heard, even designing equipment, and working on his breathing exercises so he could be better at underwater hockey. He was a skilled individual from welding iron to glass blowing, which you'll see on display here some of his pieces, which are absolutely beautiful. What a gift. Let us not forget his deep affection for his German shepherd. I know she misses him. In the wake of this devastating loss, we must remember that while Kevin is no longer with us in person, his spirit, courage and legacy will continue to shine brightly in the hearts and minds of all who knew him. His sacrifice reminds us of the dangers our firefighters face daily and the profound dedication they bring to their noble calling. Today, we honor Kevin's memory by pledging ourselves to the values he held dear, bravery, selflessness, and unwavering service to the city of Chicago. We owe it to him and to all those who have gone before us to carry on with that same legacy, commitment and honor they displayed throughout their lives in service. As we bid farewell to Lieutenant Kevin Ward, let us also extend our deepest condolences and support to his family. Let us keep them in our thoughts and prayers, as well as his fire department family, Engine 11, Truck 9, Battalion 11, and Ambulance 2. Personally, to Mr. and Mrs. Ward, his sister, Ren, and best friend, Corinne, know that you are not alone in your grief and that the entire Chicago Fire Department and the city of Chicago stand with you during this time and always. I want to share with you that when a member of the fire service passes, we receive lots of letters and condolences from across the country. We get a lot because we have that type of family. I received a personal note from a chief of North Myrtle Beach Fire Department that reads, there's a special bond within our fire department family, and the sense of loss we feel when we lose one of our own transcends, transcends the different patches on our uniforms. So you'll notice we all have different patches, Chicago, New York, California, um, and our suburbs. But when one department experiences a loss, we feel the pain and share the grief because we are truly one big family. I am reminded that in this profession, it is not a job, it's a calling. We were called to do this. It's times like this that we lean on each other for strength. We have been through a lot of CFD, a whole lot this year, more than I've seen in my 33 years. But I know we are CFD strong. We will get through this, 
and we will continue the work that we will set forth to do. In conclusion, let us remember Kevin as an exceptional individual, a selfless leader, and a loving family man. His memory will forever be engraved in our hearts, and his sacrifice will always inspire us to be better, to do better, and to honor his legacy through our actions every day we put on this uniform. May Lieutenant Kevin Ward rest in eternal peace, and may his legacy continue to illuminate the path of service to others. May we follow in his tradition, and may others look at us and want to do what we do. Thank you. Our third tribute to Kevin will be offered this morning by Captain Anthony Mazzaro and members of Truck 9. Good morning. I'd just like to say thank you from Truck 9, Engine 11, and Ambulance 2 for being here today to say goodbye to our brother, Lieutenant Kevin Peter Ward, but more importantly, to be here to celebrate his life. Unfortunately, the mayor and the, the fire commissioner took a lot of my speech, but that's okay because it shows that everybody kind of felt the same about Kevin. When I was asked to say a few words about Kevin, I thought to myself, how do you describe such an interesting person with just a few words? Friends of Kevin will often describe him as different, and he was. He had a very adventurous spirit, a thirst for knowledge, and a passion for trying new things. How else would you describe a man with an econ economics degree who worked at the Board of Trade, worked on a fishing boat in Alaska, worked as a ski instructor in Colorado, worked as a hotel chef like scuba, he was an artist, a welder, mechanic, fireman, and of course, the underwater hockey player. It has also been rumored that he worked at a horse farm in Colorado where he could ride horses and make extra money. When I read the obituary that Kevin's father wrote, I was struck by how his tribute to Kevin so paralleled the way most people who knew him thought of him. His teammates and friends on his hockey team all used words like leader, mentor, and friend, sentiments echoed by his brothers and sisters and his CFD family. In 1996, Kevin joined the CFD, his sister Karen, Ryan as she's known, told me it's where Kevin truly found his path in life. And this made sense to me, because the fire department allowed him to try and learn different jobs and challenge himself. And Kevin did. He started as a candidate at Truck 9 and quickly transferred to busier houses throughout the city. Engine 116, Engine 39, where he learned engine work. Truck 9, Truck 51, where he learned truck work. Engine 9, Engine 10, Tower Ladder 63, where he learned airport operations. 512, which is our hazmat team, where he can indulge his love of science. And then back again to Truck 9 as a lieutenant to share with others the lessons he learned. If they wrote a book about Kevin, I think they would call it The Adventures of Kevin, A Man and His Dog. His German Shepherd Sky was a very big joy in his life. Kevin and Skye were inseparable. She was kind of a fixture at our firehouse. She would visit us frequently. Most people got along with her, but there were some people she didn't care for. One, one of them was our battalion chief, <laughs> who ironically was named Hans Zeichenbach. She would meet him at the door with a loud bark to let everyone know that, that he was there. The only other person who had an issue was a member who was allergic to dogs. When Kevin found out, being the problem solver that he was, 
He bought a Dyson vacuum cleaner to try to pick up all the hair. It was a very nice gesture, but it didn't work. <laughs> I think he got a good laugh when he saw the member in the morning with watery eyes, runny nose, and an itchy skin. Since Kevin and his dog always seemed to be, to be together, I would always tease him. I would ask him if he brought his dog to any of his underwater hockey games. He would just chuckle and say, I tried once, but the dog had a hard time holding its breath underwater. So I had to push him a little bit more, and I says, well, then why don't you just take the dog, whose name is Sky, skydiving? He said, I thought about it, but it's really hard to get a dog to jump out of a perfectly good airplane. Now, full disclosure, I may have embellished a little bit on these stories, but it was the only way that I could convey to people who never met him the kind of person that he was. If somebody told you they went skydiving with their dog last weekend, you would probably say you're kidding. But with Kevin, you just look at him and say, how was it? <laughs> because after all, this is a man who was excited when the transmission on his car went out because he got to go home, take it apart, and fix it. At the end of the day, I think everybody who knew Kevin would tell you the same thing. He was a good person, and we were all lucky to have known him. I would, thank, would like to thank Ward's family, his father John, his late mother Valerie, stepmother Beth, and his sister Wren, and his former wife and still very good friends, Corinne, for sharing Kevin with us. If you look to your right, engine 11 and truck 9 had a decal made up in honor of Kevin. It depicts the Maltese Cross, which has been adopted by firefighters because it stands for protection and virtue. Many of the virtues it stands for describe Kevin. Loyalty, bravery, courage, defender of the weak. And of course, in the middle, a picture of his beloved dog, Sky. We cannot think of a better way to honor Kevin. With permission from our fire commissioner, we will affix this decal to truck nine in his memory. It is my hope that everyone who views this decal, decal will re remember Kevin's sacrifice courage, and bravery. I also, help, I also hope it will remind us all of the fragility of life and to live life to the fullest every day, just like Kevin did. When I think of Kevin, I'll always remember him with a smile on his face, and I think that's the way we should all remember him with a smile on our face. In conclusion, I'd just like to say I've always felt the highest compliment that you could give to a firefighter is to say he was a good firefighter. And Lieutenant Kevin Ward was a good firefighter. And now, Corinne Walenda and John Ward, Kevin's father, will share their personal remembrances of Kevin with us. Kevin and I were together for more than 15 years. We actually used to live down the street from this church. And we often walked over here sometimes just to listen to the choir practice. Kevin always felt that the fourth church was exemplary with their community work and really represented everything that a church should be. So it is quite an honor that we're able to have his service here today. Thank you. I have never much cared for the term X when speaking about Kevin. As our divorce was simple, we opened up a big bottle of wine, 
and wrote down our intentions and simply handed them to an attorney. Afterwards, we would get together, sometimes for sushi. We frequently watched each other's dogs. I even took him to his colonoscopy. <laughs> Insert your own joke there. Um, so I have never called Kevin my ex. He is my husband. It's a good term. Use it. I, I don't have a trademark on it. It's, it's a good term. Speaking of dogs, as we've already said, if you knew Kevin, you knew his German Shepherd dog, Skye. She and my German Shepherd, whose name is Ditka, have been best friends since Kevin adopted Skye in 2017. She is probably the sweetest German Shepherd of all time, and ours is her new forever home. She's getting lots of belly rubs, treats, and walks. When I think of Kevin's spirit, I am reminded of his favorite book, The Hobbit, in which Bilbo Baggins exclaimed, I'm going on an adventure. He was always immensely curious and loved a challenge. As you know, he was also an artist. For many years, Kevin was a blown glass artist, a difficult, highly physical, and somewhat dangerous artistic endeavor. He, and as you know, he created all the glass art that you see down there on the table. Do you know how those large glass plates are made? Oh, it's easy. You simply pick up a 2,700 degree blob of molten silica, lime, and sodium on the end of a steel blowpipe, then slowly open up that blob while quickly spinning that molten glass at the end of the pipe. To make that one of those large plates, I literally saw Kevin jump up and down while adding enough torque onto that pipe so that the glass molecules would slide outward to make a large plate. That's called coefficient of expansion for our physicists who are here. He knows that. This art form requires perfect coordination between the right and the left hands, and it took Kevin years to perfect the precise, the precise movements required to create those glass art, art pieces. More than 20 years ago, I introduced Kevin to scuba diving. And in true Kevin fashion, scuba became an obsession. In two short years, he logged more than 400 dives. That's more dives than I had accomplished in the previous two decades. He earned certifications in Trimix, Nitrox, dry suit diving, cave and wreck diving, and the use of rebreather equipment, which is the same equipment used by the Navy SEALs. Kevin even worked for a time as a rescue diver for the Chicago Fire Department. Through diving, Kevin explored the depths of the Great Lakes, surveying dozens of shipwrecks in near freezing water. He dived with giant manta rays and their 22-foot wingspan near the Socorros Islands. He dived with green sea turtles in the Caribbean, sharks, and humpback whales in Hawaii. He also investigated the vast network of underwater caves in Mexico. Do you know how to squeeze through a tiny hole in an underwater cave? Well, what you need to do is remove your tank and your BCD, keep your regulator in your mouth, shove that tank and BCD through the hole, swim through it, put your gear back on, and move along. He loved it. I was screaming inside my head the entire time. He did not lack fear, but he was able to compartmentalize it and let logic and process prevail. He was also an incredibly powerful swimmer. While we were diving in the Galapagos Islands, 
near the Darwin Arch, we came alongside a whale shark. For those of you who don't know, the whale shark is the largest fish in the ocean. And this one was a big female. She was about 35 feet long, which is about the size of a CTA bus. Anyway, I could not keep up with her. So I handed Kevin one of my cameras, and he shot up towards her face and took so many photos of her eyeing him like, who are you and how did you get here? Many scuba divers also play underwater hockey as a means to improve fin and breath control. Now, here's what happens in underwater hockey. Two teams try to maneuver a three-pound puck along the bottom of a swimming pool, all the while holding their breath, and you only wear a mask, fins, and snorkel. You're not wearing scuba gear. It's perhaps one of the most obscure sports in the world, but it is exceptionally tough, somewhat chaotic, and altogether exhilarating. Not only did Kevin love playing underwater hockey, he also designed and built and sold custom gloves, sticks or pushers, and traveled all over North America with his teammates. He also participated and organized underwater hockey tournaments. Many of Kevin's underwater hockey friends are here today. In case some of you would like to take up the sport, go ahead and talk to them. Some of his teammates have told me that during games, they could always count on Kevin giving all to score. He most recently played forward and, like Michael Jordan, possessed an astonishing amount of speed, strength, and power to help shove goals into the net along the bottom of a swimming pool. During underwater hockey practices, Kevin would always take it upon himself to make improvements. His team's new pool in Bensonville didn't have walls or a line to help designate the court space. Kevin innovatively created a weighted cord that his teammates still use to this day to create that boundary. No one asked him to do it. He just did it. He did a lot of things like that for the sport and for others over the years. Kevin would see someone not get enough power in their kicking and show up at the next practice with a new pair of fins that he thought would help them improve their kick. He would never charge them for it. When asked for a price, he would just randomly throw a dollar amount out. That was way below market price. He enjoyed the camaraderie of underwater hockey, and it was really never about creating a business. Other activities, and there are others, in Kevin's wheelhouse included rock climbing, easily hiking 14ers in the Rocky Mountains. That's, that's hikes above 14,000 feet. Welding and cooking. He was a great cook and often cooked at his assigned firehouses. The trouble was when he would come home to our house to cook, he cooked as though there were 15 men living in our house. And we had leftovers for days. Adventurer, traveler, athlete, friend, artist. My husband was all of these. Kevin was also an avid reader. And again, in true Kevin fashion, he was typically reading two or three books at a time, plus The Economist, plus Popular Mechanics. But again, his favorite book was The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings trilogy. Please do me a favor and repeat after me. I'm going on an adventure. I'm going on an adventure. One more time. I'm going on an adventure. Do that. Do that in the spirit of Lieutenant Kevin Peter Ward will live on. Thank you.
I would like to give thanks, thanks to the medical staff at Loyola Hospital for their skillful and extensive treatment of Kevin's injuries and for their kindness to his family. To the fire department chiefs who maintained an around the clock watch near his bedside and were ready to help the family in any way they could. To the members of Kevin's firehouse for talking with us about Kevin and allowing us to see his on-duty home. To the whole fire department for the pageantry with which they are honoring Kevin's sacrifice, and especially firefighters who've come from further away to participate. Some memories of Kevin growing up in Ann Arbor. His early choice of reading material was from the Guinness Book of World Records and an encyclopedia. He would remember and quote records that caught his attention. When he was about 12 years old, a science teacher lectured that Einstein invented relativity. Kevin interrupted to insist that Einstein did not invent relativity, rather he discovered it. The teacher did not welcome this correction. <laughs> In high school, Kevin got poor grades. In desperation, his mother and I decided for one semester to bribe him with cash for good grades. He got all A's that semester, <laughs> and we paid out as arranged. His sister indignantly pointed out that she always got good grades, and no one was offering to pay her. Kevin joked, oh, you have to get bad grades for years to get a deal like that. And now some of my cherished memories from the time spent with Kevin as an adult. Hiking on a number of occasions in the front range of the Rocky Mountains above Boulder, Colorado. Working together on a computer program to automate assignment of furlough dates to firefighters according to their seniority and priorities as specified by fire department rules. Watching him play at an underwater hockey game in Golden, Colorado, and seeing nothing. <laughs> Visiting his glassblowing studio, whose furnace, control circuitry, and other equipment he'd built himself. Watching him give a glassblowing demonstration there helping me when visiting Ann Arbor with my hobby of building sets for amateur theatrical productions. A visit to Ann Arbor that Kevin made in his recently acquired lifelong dream Porsche car. Kevin took me for a stimulating trip on the freeway ring around Ann Arbor with his dog Sky riding shotgun. Here's an odd coincidence. Kevin had a previous fire department assignment to O'Hare Airport. He was approved to drive a vehicle on the taxiways and runways. It turned out that I too had been approved to drive around an airfield a decade before Kevin was born, albeit a much smaller airfield than O'Hare a newly discovered genetically linked trait, perhaps. Kevin read broadly and, in just, and enjoyed discussing books that he had read. For example, we discussed the making of the atomic bomb, we discussed physics, we discussed engineering and the people involved. 
A few years ago, Kevin wrote me a gracious Christmas card, noting that my reading to him and his sister as they grew up had really started his, and I quote, lifelong habit and enjoyment of reading. A wonderful Christmas card for a parent to get. I will remember time spent with him at his cabin in Colorado, felling pine trees afflicted with pine beetle. Some collateral damage to local power line was also involved. <laughs> his plan had been to retire to that cabin, and after preparing the site using earth-moving equipment, he had acquired an auction and renovated. He planned to build a workshop to, ha to house his machine tools. The cabin nestles at the base of a rocky outcrop. From the top of the outcrop to the east, one can see down the canyon to Denver and to the Great Plains beyond. To the west are the majestic peaks of the Continental Divide. An idyllic pace which, in which I will choose to remember him. So, to summarize, Kevin, my son, I watched him take his first breath. I watched him take his last breath. I loved him. I will miss him. President of Local 2, Patrick Cleary, and IAFF 8th District Vice President Mark Sanders will now present the IAFF Medal of Honor to Kevin's family. Let us pray. Almighty God, in Jesus, you promised many rooms within your house. Give us faith to see beyond touch and sight some sure sign of your kingdom, and where vision fails to trust your love, which never fails. Help us to release Kevin into your care and keeping in the confidence that all life finds its fulfillment with you in the joy of your everlasting kingdom. We commend to you those who will miss Kevin the most in the days to come because they loved him the best, his family and friends, his fellow firefighters, his teammates, and many, many, many more. 
O oh God, grant that, casting every care on you, they may know the consolation of your love. God of all comfort, in the midst of pain, heal us with your love. In the darkness of sorrow, shine upon us as the morning star. Awaken in us the spirit of mercy, that as we feel the pain of others, we may share with them the comfort we receive from you. And bring us at last with all your people into the kingdom of your glory, where death itself is ended and every tear is wiped from every eye. And hear us now as we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One more time, I will invite you to stand as we sing our hymn together. Now thank we all our God. And now let us commend our brother Kevin to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Let us pray. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Kevin. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Now please remain standing as Battalion Chief Jake Jacubeck performs the Chicago Fire Department bell ringing ceremony.
Uniform members, attention! The playing of taps is a sign of reverence for a fallen comrade. In the Chicago Fire Department's Code of Signals, 335 indicates that a member in a company has returned home. With the sounding of this bell, Lieutenant EMT Kevin P. Ward has returned home. Uniform members, hand salute. Four members covers. Say a little prayer moment of silence for our firefighters and paramedics working their 24-hour platoon today, and also our Chicago police officers, OEMC members, dispatchers, and call takers, and also our, our military fighting overseas for our way of life and our way of freedom. Amen. Thank you. Covers. Uniform members. Eddie's. The right face. Receive now this benediction. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with you today and every day. Amen. This time, could I ask the uniformed members of the Chicago Fire Department and the Chicago Police Department to please be dismissed and reassemble outside to pay our last tribute to Lieutenant Kevin Ward. covering this here for you. I didn't know a whole lot about Lieutenant Kevin Ward prior to the past hour and 10 minutes, but everything I heard, he sounded like a delightful man. A real Renaissance man. For those who may have tuned in late, uh, this is the funeral for Lieutenant, Lieutenant Kevin Ward. He was hurt fighting a house fire with Chicago Fire on August 11th. He passed away surrounded by family August 29th. And those same family members, his father and uh, former wife, spoke so beautifully about a life that was very full, filled with hobbies, filled with risk, and filled with dedication to his service of protecting the people of Chicago. Yeah, his father in a beautiful and heartbreaking English accent. Uh, Lieutenant Ward was actually born overseas. Mm. Said, you know, I watched him take his first breath 
and I watched him take his final breath. Uh, one of the many moving lines from today also. Uh, Kareen Walenda, uh, many would title the, the ex-wife. Um, she says that's not the case. Mm -hmm. They were very close and uh, she refers to the decedent uh, Lieutenant Kevin Peter Ward as her husband, uh, playing husband there, which just shows the affinity that they still had for each other. And, and how many can say that? Few, very a few. After a breakup, so speaks volumes to who he was. You see now uh, so many first responders lining up outside Fourth Presbyterian Church of Chicago. It's such an iconic building, of course, right there on Michigan Avenue. Uh, the majesty of it, uh, the ivy there. Uh, it was actually, interestingly enough, backstory. It was dedicated in October 8th of 1871, Fourth Presbyterian Church. That was the very day the Chicago fire hit mm. and it was eventually burned to the ground and reborn again and is seen mightily today. It had a lot of meaning for Lieutenant Ward. Um, his former wife mentioned that they used to live not far from there and they would come to that church and listen to choir practice. That yeah. was a moment of peace for both of them yeah. and he appreciated the community uh, that this um, this house of worship fostered and she said it was fitting that his, cer his ceremony should be held there today. Lieutenant Ward, a member of Engine 11, Truck 9, and you see here Chicago Fire Department preparing for its final goodbye to Lieutenant Ward as he and his family head to a final private service um, to say their goodbyes this morning, yeah. this afternoon. God bless to Lieutenant Kevin Peter Ward one of three firefighters who have lost their lives in the line of duty this year so far. And may St. Matthew, the patron saint of civil servants, continue to watch over the 4,500 other firefighters, paramedics, thousands of Chicago police officers that protect us every day. Thank you for spending this morning and afternoon remembering Lieutenant Ward with us.